In this problem, we are given the following circuit diagram here, and we are also given a lot of information in this area right here that we are going to use to solve and plug into this equation. We are also given this theta right here, and we are told to find the numeric value of the transient response, which is this tr I transient, and then also the numeric value of the steady state response, which is this value right here, I steady state, and then find the total response. And the total response is going to be both of our I's combined together. First, we are going to solve for our I transient right here. This is going to be our first equation. First, we're going to solve for our I transient right here, and we will be writing it out again. So first we have our negative Vmax. We know this is our Vmax, it's provided in our sinusoidal form, so it will be a negative, because this is part of the transient formula, 75. Next, I'm going to deal with everything on the numerator, so we're going to the cosine. We're going to have a cosine. We have our phase angle, and the phase angle can also be found here to be negative 60 degrees. Next, we have our minus theta right here, and our theta is the tangent negative one, omega L over R, and that's given to us right here. Our omega can be found in here as well, so it'll be 4,000 times our L, which is inductance, and here it is 75 times 10 to the negative cubed. We have the negative cube because it's in millis, and we just need to convert it to henrys, and this is all over the resistance, which we know to be 400 ohms. This is one of the pieces of information given to us right here. Then I'm going to close this off with two parentheses here. Next, we are going to deal with the E. We have our E, and then it's going to be raised. We have our resistance up top, and we know our resistance to be 400. And this is going to be divided by our inductance. And our inductance here is 75, but we need to compensate for the millis, so it's going to be times 10 to the negative cubed. We are going to close these parentheses off, and now we have to multiply it by our time. Our time is given a little bit lower. It is given right above part A. We have this T is equal to 75 microseconds. And we know a micro is 10 to the negative 6, so we are just going to plug that in. Now, this is all going to be over our next equation, the next part of the equation, which is the square root of our R squared. We know our R squared to be 400, so this will be 400 squared. And to this, we are going to add our omega. We know our omega to be 4,000. And then this is going to be multiplied by our inductance, which we know to be 75 times 10 to the negative cubed, and this as well is squared. Now, before we finish this up, we want to make sure that everything in the numerator with our cosine and our tangent is in degrees or radians. We can only solve if they're the same type. We see that this negative 60 is in degrees, and we know that our theta is measured in degrees as well. So since all of that in here is in degrees, this checks out, and now we can plug all of this into a calculator using the degrees as our mode. And if we do that, we're going to get approximately 3.20. And if we do this, we're going to get approximately 3.29, and this is being multiplied by 10 to the negative fourth. Now, this is being measured in amps. We are asked to convert this to milliamps, so we're going to multiply this by 1 milli, and after this, it's going to be divided by 10 to the negative cube, because that's the equivalent. And if we flip this on top, or even easier, if we divide these out, we are just going to get a 10 times negative 1 up top. So we can move the decimal place over to the left one, and we are going to get approximately 0 0.329 as our I transient. Now we are going to solve for our I steady state, which is this second part of the equation. Um, a lot of it is going to be the same, however there are some differences here. So first off, we are going to start off with a 75. So after we have our 75 in here, we are going to multiply this by the cosine. And inside of our cosine, it's going to be a little bit different. We have our omega first, and our omega is 4,000, being multiplied by our time, which we know is 750 microseconds. So we're going to plug both of these in. And to this, we are going to add our phase angle, which is this negative 60 degrees here. So we're going to add a negative 60 degrees. And now we are going to add, and now we're going to subtract our theta right here. Well, we did that previously up here, so we could just copy this all the way down there. And then if we plug this in, we are going to get this value, and we can use a closing parenthesis right here. And this is all going to be divided by the square root of our r squared 
plus the omega times our inductance squared, which is basically the same exact thing as we did up here. So we can also copy this and plug it into our current equation as well. However, there is a slight problem with our current equation and it is inside of our cosine. And this is because of a difference in units. So if we look at the negative 60 degrees right here, we can see that it is in degrees. And we know that this is our theta, which is also measured in degrees. However, this, these constants are in radians. So we need to convert this from radians into our degrees. To do this, I'm just going to scoot everything over a little bit, and then I'm going to multiply this to turn it into degrees by a 180 degrees and divide it by a pi. That way we get rid of the radians and we only are left with degrees. Now we can plug all of this into a calculator. And after we do this, we are gonna get approximately 0.03877 or 0.039. And this is measured in amps, just as it was previously. We know that we want it in milliamps, so we're going to multiply it by 1 milli over 10 to the negative cubed. And if we do this, we are just going to move our decimal spot 3 to the right, because we can flip this over, and we can see we're basically multiplying by 10 cubed. And then we are going to get approximately 39 milliamps. That is the answer for part B. Now, the I total is just the combination of our i transients and our i steady state. We are just adding these together. So we're just going to add our part A and our part B. And if we add these together, we're gonna to get 39.33 milliamps approximately. That is the answer and how to go about solving for this problem. If you want more network analysis problems or you want to see notes covering this entire coursework, they are both linked below the like button in the description.